it's Don here from the board. So, after my previous video where I had attempted to use the 3018 CNC, mini CNC, uh, courtesy from Banggood, that I had discovered, you know, there was some issues with essentially a warped drive screw. Now, it's quite a long piece of metal, you know, 360 odd mil long and whatnot, so I wouldn't say that it's necessarily out of the possibility that it was damaged in transit or it just wasn't made perfectly straight. Now there's other issues in play with 3D printed parts and tolerances and shrink and whatever, so you know, it could just be straight up bad luck on my behalf. And I felt that even though I sort of gave it a bit of a, a negative light, this CNC still had a lot of potential. So, as I said in the last video, it's probably something that you could fix just with a bit of ingenuity and a bit of 3D design and printing, which is exactly what I've gone and done. So, what I did was, I went in and I designed a bracket. And the whole point of this particular bracket is that, well there's some mounting points which will go into the actual frame. The stepper motor will sit here, so that when it's in position, roughly like so, it won't be able to push out like what had actually happened. And this plate position here will also help prevent it supporting the stepper motor enough, the rotation, the free rotation of that stepper motor. Uh, you know, I designed it, it only took me, I don't know, probably 20 minutes to uh, tinker around, take some, some measurements and whatnot. I threw it into the printer and I printed off the part. And what I've done now is I've set up the CNC just like I did before. It's on the floor underneath me and I've got uh, Goebel set up with the same logo so that we're getting a direct one-for-one -one comparison. Now I've already spent the time zeroing the X, Y and the Z parameters so we're not really going to go through them. Um, but what I wanted to show you was... Uh, so. Here it is, back on the floor again, and over here is this bracket. Now, you'll notice that the bracket looks like it's got masking tape on it, because it actually does have masking tape. I use masking tape on top of my 3D prints to give it a bit of extra strength, because the tape helps just give like a skin surface on it. Now, you could actually do finishing techniques and use like acetone and things like that, which will help bond the layers together and just give it a bit more strength. Masking tape is a quick and easy chem free way of doing that for me and I just usually put one or two layers on it and that sort of helps out. So you can see I'm just using my foot to push the, uh, <laughs> the plate that the camera is mounted to. That's the uh, actual 3D printed part there and it allows me to have that freedom of play that we saw that the motor actually needed to get all the way down to the end of that drive screw but it's also got a bit of good stiff support where see I can move the whole assembly without risk of that drive motor being pushed out so hopefully that will help and of course you know being the uh, the designer that I was I was really happy that the actual screw holes and everything else fit first go all right so We'll come back all the way around to the front again. Um, I've already lifted the actual the the actual engraving off to a safe Z limit here. And what I want to show you is with that in its position, using the actual <coughs> Goebel controller, I can drive The lead screw all the way across and you'll see it's bobbing up and down so if I just move that across a bit and we have a look at that stepper motor it's bobbing up and down but, you know what, that's fine. Because my 3D printed part is doing its job, 
in actually keeping it in place where it needs to be. So hopefully this run is actually going to be a little bit more successful. All I've done is I've got the same piece of plywood and I've just flipped it around to the other side so that I've got a, a surface that I can use. And uh, what I'll do now is <clears throat> I will stop this segment and then start it again, but this time in a time lapse and hopefully we'll get to see a fully engraved part. Now, if you see shadows and things like that, I do apologize, but what I'm doing this time is I'm actually going to stay here with it only because I don't want anything happening while I'm away, like last time and potentially damaging the cables and the motors if stuff had got caught and stripped out and stuff like that. So hopefully we're going to get to see a good time lapse of uh, this particular uh, CNC being cut and uh, yeah, I'll catch you shortly. Okay, well, wow, um, that was a bit of another spectacular fail, but this time uh, it was probably more me than the machine. So you may have noticed I actually had to stop there because the uh, initial run, the plywood was not somehow flat. Looking at it now, um, just putting it on the table surface, it doesn't seem like there's an issue maybe but uh i suppose it was probably related to the fact that i had tightened it with the clamps and it must have been pulling it at an angle because that first bit that i had i'm not sure what happened but it was obviously user error but uh the actual tip of that that end mill got caught in the wood and it snapped right off so I couldn't use that so I had to stop it and swap out to a different one so here's here's the one that I snapped off so the end of that completely broke off uh, <laughs> which obviously wasn't a very good thing but then see when I put this actual CNC path together I'd used easel and I'd put in the material which was birch plywood which is what this is and i'd put in the specs of the spindle which was meant to be a 7000 rpm motor and all that kind of stuff but it would seem like that the second bit that they provided it is a little bit wider uh so the depth and because i re-zeroed it as you would have seen on the time lapse as well but the feed rate for it was not correct so it did the early parts of it okay and you'll see it's probably a bit wider a bit broader than the first time see the definition of the lettering there is a lot better compared to uh, the second time because of that wider end mill but what happened was the feed rate was too fast and it was really starting to dig in to the point where it actually loosened itself and it actually almost well it did come out completely now I actually tried to tighten it up and I'm not 100% uh, competent is probably the best way of describing it. So when I paused it, I couldn't stop the spindle, so I had to abort the run. But then when I aborted the run, I wasn't able to get it to start where it stopped. It, went, it wanted to go back to the start again, so I stopped it completely. In this context, you know, 
it was driving a lot of force on the actual lead screws and I'm very, ha I'm very happy to report at least that my 3D printed solution for that x-axis stepper motor worked an absolute treat. So you can see it actually managed to do that curve as well as it could pushing against the material a lot faster than it should have and that bottom part around where that microphone base is milled quite nicely. So all in all, I'm going to say that this machine is quite capable, but it needs the right user experience going into the actual instructions. It'll do whatever you tell it to do, whether it's right or wrong, and it's not going to care if you damage itself. So in that case, it's definitely user error for the issues that I'm experiencing. Now, with what's just happened, um, controlling the actual z-axis seems to have it might have done something to the actual stepper motor i'm not entirely sure it feels like and it sounds like it's not moving as smoothly as it was before i can't imagine that it's necessarily damaged it properly but when i say damaged it properly i mean like fully damaged it in some way uh but everything else seems to be okay so right now i'm not going to have another go at it because well i need to perhaps get a bit more scrap plywood that's the first part and the second part is i probably need to go and get some more end mill bits now i have read that there are different upgrades available you can swap over to an er11 collet which gives you a lot more uh, range in the actual end mills that you can put into it and of course i'm going to have to learn a lot more in regards to using gerbil controller so that I'm actually not going to run into the same problem mistake and, and damage and wreck the actual CNC. Now putting that in context, my revised conclusions for this 3018 CNC is that it actually does the job on what it's meant to do. If you tell it what to do and you are not as unlucky as I am in having potentially a dodgy lead screw. My solution for that lead screw has restored the function of this device uh, and you know it does what it's meant to do it'll move it'll spin it'll cut and it'll also ruin your day if the uh, idiot behind the control tells it to do something dumb so there you go i want to say thank you of course to banggood for actually sending this to me again um, they've been pretty generous in in supporting our channel here and sending stuff across of course I will try and see if I can get a link for you guys below that you can go and check it out. And if you're interested, if they've got any discounts, uh, their summer sale, the 2019 summer sale, coupons, giveaways, discounts galore, you know, all that kind of jazz, then please do check them out. And your supporting them will also inherently support me and allow me to be able to continue to do more fun stuff like this for you guys to check out. So... Thanks again, uh, and of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.